been reading this book called An Altar in the World, and one of the things that it's been encouraging me is that beyond the church walls and beyond the chapels, that we can create altars to God in our daily lives wherever we are. And so I want to encourage you all um, this evening that in spite of the fact that we're here to hear this wonderful gospel choir, we are here to be entertained, some of us, that um, we, even in spite of wherever you are, can create an altar to God and reverence God this evening wherever you are, that we can create moments and God can meet us right where we're at, right in the seats in Gaston Hall. And so we're really excited. I want to welcome you. For those that don't know me, my name is Reverend Christy Adams. I'm the Protestant chaplain here. And I want to welcome you to this uh, spring gospel choir concert. We're, we're going to have a prayer and then a welcome. And then after, we're going to be able to hear this wonderful choir who has worked so hard. But I specifically wanted to welcome you and encourage you this evening that it's beyond performance. This is ministry. These are, these are our young women and young men singing praises to God. And I pray that you will be blessed by it. Would you all bow your heads and pray with me? Father, we come before you with thankfulness today for all that you are and all that you have done, for your grace which sustains us, your love which compels us, and your goodness which overwhelms us. Lord, today we are especially overjoyed at the sight of an empty tomb and a risen Savior. Father, I thank you for the sun which rose this morning and for the breath which you have placed in our lungs. O Lord, it is our deepest desire to use this breath today to magnify your name and your name alone. Would the melodies in this place be a sweet fragrance before your throne? I thank you for the musicians and the choir members, the friends and family, the students and faculty that you have gathered here today. Would you uplift weary spirits Comfort the brokenhearted. Bring new life to those burdened by the cares of this world. Lord, I pray that our offering of song might minister to each of them through your spirit, that they might see your beauty and know the joy of resurrection. So I pray this all in the death-defeating, life-giving, new-making, precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone, good evening. I can't hear y'all. Good evening. That's more like it. Um, Good evening, everyone. Uh, My name is Joy Robertson. I'm president of the Gospel Choir this year. Thank you. (laughs) Um, And on behalf of the choir, I want to thank everyone for coming out to our service, A Song and Praise. It's so lovely to see so many familiar and unfamiliar faces in the crowd tonight. Um, And I just want to welcome you all in to worship with us. Um, So if you see us swaying, you can sway in your seats, you can stand up, you can clap, you can sing along. So it's very participatory. So it's a service. It's not just a performance from us. Um, The Classical Choir has been working really hard this entire year. Uh, We've been blessed with the support of President DeJoya to have a CD that was recorded last semester with help of alumni and uh, our choir, new and old members. And then this semester we've been working equally hard to put on a great service for you all today. Um, Under the great leadership of Philip Carter, a multi-talented composer, musician, arranger, um, and just a funny guy and a, you know, very holy guy overall. Um, We are really, really excited to have you here tonight. So without further ado, welcome our Georgetown University Gospel Choir.
Hello, everybody. How you doing? Good. Now, when they announced the choir, y'all gave me just a little woo, woo, woo. But you know, we're going to stop and do this again. Y'all turn around. Okay. Now introducing the Georgetown University Gospel Choir. Come on, give it up. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We're going to have a good time. Amen. Somebody say, yell out, praise the Lord. Come on, let's roll it.
Concert. All right, come on, really clap. Come on, get this. Stuff. Come on, come on. We gotta get y'all ready to go. Come on, clap your hands like this. It says, My heart is fixed and my mind is made up. Y'all gonna help us sing it. Here we go. One, two, three. My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. Say it. Come on, my heart. My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. Still my soul is heavenly bound To see what the 
That's just our personal testimony. We thank him for all that we are, Amen. all that he's made us to be, and all that we're going to be. Amen? Yes, we're all in the process of becoming something. So as long as we lean on to his, to, not unto our own understanding, we, he yeah. will make us into he, to what he wants us to be. Amen. So we want him to speak to our heart. Holy Spirit, yes. give us the words that will bring new life. Yes. Words on the wings of the morning, Woo! the dark nights will fade away. Yes. Lord, if you speak to my heart. Yes. Come on, let's do it. Give him all that applause in the middle of it. Just speak, speak to 
Gospel Choir. So every Sunday that the Protestant community gathers, and for us this Sunday is our worship, a service of song and celebration. Every Sunday we gather, we take time to take up an offering, saying that God has given us enough for ourselves and plenty to share. We say that everyone gathered here has something that they can give to someone else. And so we take up an offering. And in the last sort of few years, we have gotten really intentional about what we commit ourselves to. And so this, for this season, during the season of Easter, the Protestant community and the Catholic community are dedicating all of their offerings for those who take that phrase, men and women for others, very seriously in their post-graduation plans. A number of our students decide to commit themselves in service with other community partners um, for minimal salary at best, often in need of stipends. And our offerings that we collect from now until the end of the year are going to be used to provide grants on behalf of Georgetown to those students who are giving themselves in service to others. Thank you, yeah. I appreciate the applause. The bigger applause goes to we have enough students that we need to do this. That right there says something about what, uh, what kind of students we have. So the applause goes to the students. So I invite you to give generously as you can and as you feel led. That said, we say that everyone here has a prayer. And whatever faith tradition you come from, or if there's no faith tradition and you just want to put some good vibes on our offerings, we ask that you place your hands on the baskets and ask that God's blessing follow our gifts so that they can be an experience of hope in someone else's life. Let us offer our gifts to God.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many gifts you've bestowed upon our lives, and we offer these our return offerings of praise and thanksgiving as we commit them to serve thy name faithfully, going out and spreading hope, love, and peace throughout our world. We ask this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. So the scripture for today comes from the gospel according to John chapter 21. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter Thomas, or Simon Peter Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, We will go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. And early in the morning Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. And he called out to them, Friends, have you caught any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. Now the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. And when they landed, they saw a fire burning of coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring me some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and we did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. And when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you, love, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he answered. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your, arm, your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said, Follow me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, grant that as your word was read and is now proclaimed, our hearts may be open to your spirit and our lives transformed into living testaments to your love. Amen. So uh, for years now, I've, I've threatened the gospel choir that I, I'm going to try out. Because they tell me it's a ministry, it's not a performance group, and so anyone can join, Right. And they give of themselves. I mean, for as much as we collected an offering and we've committed it, they've committed themselves Sunday after Sunday to be together as a community to benefit and bless the rest of the community through their service. And for that, we're ever grateful. But that said, we're going we're to do something. And so I'm starting with this apology. I'm sorry I'm about to do this to you. But we're going to try this. As soon as you know what I'm seeing, why don't you join along? Ready? Here we go. We're going to start with an easy one. The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Very good. All right. How about this one? It's been so long since last we met. And everyone else around here is like, oh, we're not from Georgetown. Yeah, we got that. <laughs> Where's my seniors? Seniors in the house. What? Woo! Now, if you don't know this yet, you should probably start learning this. I've sung this song so many times. Uh, Hail, O Georgetown, alma mater, swift Potomac's ever watching. Everyone, it's like, you know, all the other songs that I get to the part you don't know. If you ever go to a hockey game, I'm from upstate New York, and, you know, they always play O Canada, and everyone can get through the first O Canada, and then they stop because they don't know anything after that, right? Sort of like that. How about twinkle, twinkle, little, there we go. How I want 
There's one song that we sing in my family all the time. Um, my son makes me sing it. He sings, light, light, sing me light. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Right, right. You know, we have this thing, right? Uh, music. Uh, wrote Hans Christian Andersen, speaks where words fail. It speaks words that we can't say. I mean, the gospel choir up here is singing of disappointment, of sadness, of joy, of celebration, of resurrection. Like, how do you explain resurrection except through song? Songs speak to us in languages that speak directly to our heart. They use words that we don't have language for, Right? And so music means so much to us. And I don't know if this happens to you, but, you know, there's moments in my life where I find myself hitting repeat on a song over and over and over again. You know, sometimes it's like that song that really gets you up. You're like, yeah, I'm going to listen to that song again. You're like, you know, and, you know, three weeks later, you're like, I, uh, I really can go without that song now. I've had those moments of tragedy. Uh, I, I will admit to all of the students here who've had a breakup, you know, there's always like e with each uh, sort of relationship that's failed, there's like that one song I listened in my breakup over and over again. The Cranberries came out during one of them. Like, you know, whenever I think of the band, the Cranberries, I always think of that particular relationship and um, it's tragic end. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I, it was sad at the time. I, and, you know, and every time I hear that song, I'm like, yeah, I'm done with that song. So, uh, you know, we have these songs we listen to and repeat over and over again. They speak language to us. We do the same thing, like, with our, our bodies. There's things that we go back into for comfort. We're not really sure what's going on when we're just overwhelmed with stress, right? Or when we're sort of just so sad, uh, tragically disappointed or sad, we sort of retreat into these habits, these things we do over and over again. My mother plays the piano. She's not a great pianist, but she plays the piano. I always know when she's stressed out because she plays the piano. And she would do it when I was a kid at night when I went to bed, which makes me realize now as a parent why she was playing the piano at night when I went to bed. Remember I said when she was stressed out, she'd play the piano. So, I, you know, it was her opportunity to de-stress. But that song, right, that piano playing over and over again was, was that melody I, I grew up with, provided that comfort. Here's Peter and seven other, disciples, seven other disciples who were fishermen. That's what they did before they were called by Jesus to be disciples, before they were called to follow Jesus someplace else. And look, they've had a crazy week, a couple weeks now. They've seen the person that they cared most about, that they gave up everything for and followed, who kept on saying all these amazing things about love um, and about transformation and God's kingdom and they were following him everywhere and they were a part of this and they were in the inner circle and then they had this Thursday night where they gathered for dinner and he said some really powerful things about how they were connected to one another and then they watched him get crucified they saw him die on the cross but this is a resurrection story right we're in the season of Easter we're hearing all of these appearances of Jesus and so here he is you know that Sunday, he shows up. They're in the locked room. He shows up. They're overwhelmed with joy, but they got to be a little bit confused about it. Then they tell Thomas about it, and Thomas is like, yeah, unless I get to put my finger in his hands and put my hand into his side, I'm not going to believe. Which, by the way, I think the other disciples were thinking, too, because no one was believing it until they saw it. But that's another story for a different time and a different chapter and a different verse. But, you know, here they are. Like, they've seen it. Thomas, he's appeared to Thomas. Thomas, you know, immediately fell down and believed. And it's still, they're still trying to figure out what to do with themselves. Like, they gave up everything. They followed this guy. They followed Jesus around for a few years. They've seen this. He's appeared to them again. The world is all upside down. And in the moments when the world's upside down, what do you do? You go back to what you know. You go into the kitchen and bake. You go to a book that you like to read. You read. You listen to a song over and over again. You find the places of comfort. Peter, who was a fisherman, says, I'm going to go fish. And you can just imagine him, right? Haven't you been up late with friends, like, all night long, discussing things, talking about stuff, trying to work it over in your mind, what's going on? The students here are like, no, we always go to bed by 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Right. You're up late talking to people. You can imagine them out on the boat talking and thinking about this. But as the night wears on, these are fishermen, after all. They haven't caught anything. 
Have you ever done that thing in the computer where like it's not working? You're, you're sure this one button is supposed to work and it's not doing what it's supposed to do and what do you do? You just hit it harder and keep on pushing it over and over again. It's like, it's not turning off and you just keep, wait, I'm the only one? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. All right, so anyway, that's what I do anyway. Doing the same thing over and over. And so there they are. They've been all night long, it says. The sun's beginning to rise, so they've got to be tired. And someone out on the lake shore, they can't see who on the edge of the sea goes, hey, throw your nut to the other side. These boats weren't big. It's not like the other side was that far away. You can only imagine what they wished they could say, right? I mean, I almost think they threw the net on the other side just to be like, all right, net on the other side. Sure, whatever. And threw the net on the other side, right? Do something new. Here you are at the end of your rope. Everything that you thought you understood has changed on you. And I'm giving you something new. Throw the net on the other side. They throw the net to the other side, so many fish. And it's the beloved disciple who goes, hey, it's Jesus. And you can just imagine Peter. He's just like so excited about this. It's Jesus? Like, all right, I'm jumping in, right? I just imagine him like flailing himself like over the side of the boat. And then in my mind's eye, he like goes underwater and comes back up and goes, oh, I guess I'm swimming. I thought I was going to get to walk again, um, you know. <laughs> like I thought I was going to walk just 100 yards. I can make that. Now I'm swimming 100 yards. Like eh, maybe I should have stayed in the boat. Um, <laughs> Because it doesn't sound like he beat the boat by that much, right? I mean, they're right there. Like, do you have any fish? Oh, I'll go get some. You know, he was right there. But he was so excited to see him. So excited. It's Jesus jumps right in. He's at the end of his rope. Let's go fishing. Simon, son of Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? What's he tell him? Feed my sheep. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Feed my sheep. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Take care of my sheep. The world is upside down, and I'm giving you something new. For our seniors, you're about to graduate. You're coming into the, the time of stress and anxiety, probably looking for those places of comfort. Well, actually, let me take that back. All of you, I, you know. I joke around that midterms at Georgetown start the second week of class and go until finals. So, you know. And you feel like you're at the end of the rope sometimes. Like there's nothing left. But sometimes if you listen, if you pay attention, you'll be surprised by a voice calling from the lakeside that says, hey, throw that net to the other side. Why don't you try something new? Maybe it's time for a new song. You've been listening on that song and repeat long enough. It's time to hear something of joy. In this season of Easter, as we come to the conclusion of our semester, as we all make choices, listen for that voice that's speaking a word of hope, that's speaking a word of life, of speaking a word of discipleship, speaking a word of hope, not just for you, but for the world. Do you love me more than these? Take care of my sheep. Cast that night on the other side. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we ask that you bless us. We've all been in those moments when we don't feel like we have anything left. When we're so confused as to what's going on that we find ourselves falling back into those places of comfort and returning to what we knew we go fishing. And we ask that you give us the courage to hear a voice calling to us to cast that night on the other side. And you know, we need to hear that voice not just as individuals, but as a society. We feel sometimes that we are at the end of what we possibly can do together as a community, that we're separated by so many things and that we are challenged by so much and we just ask that you call out from the lakeshore, toss that net on the other side. We've been trying the same thing over and over again and it's not working anymore. And so Lord, speak to our hearts. Speak to our hearts of a new way of living. Speak to our hearts in the way that you spoke to Peter. Rather than seeing ourselves 
as the center of everything, remind us that you've called us to take care of your sheep. That your call is one of care for the other. In a world that values self-adulation, remind us that it's in humility that we serve you. In a world that looks at how much we gain, remind us it's how much we give away. In a world that seeks just the self, remind us it's about others. And most holy God, bind us together as a community, in fellowship, in joy, in hope, so that in this hurt and broken world, we may be instruments of your peace and bring about a glimpse of the kingdom that you hope for us. We pray this in the almighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I know I'm not Emmanuel, but I want to acknowledge before we go on, my wife and children are here. They don't really get to come to much to what I got going on. Where's my wife at? She leave? Okay, back in the back. Y'all give us my wife, Stephanie, and my two boys, Thomas and Steven. Can I get some more up here? There's some monitor right here, just a mic right here. One, two. And I want to thank um, President Jack DeJoya. He came and spoke to came and spoke to our choir earlier. He's here today. He always supports us. And thank you so much for all that you do to support the gospel choir. <laughs> and of course, my main man, Reverend Brian Osvig, who is our number one champion here on, on the campus. So thank you so much. And Reverend Christy Adams. Thank you. All right. Now, so the first song on here is called Hello God, right? And what happened, this is what happened. Our soloist got stuck on a flight. One of our Georgetown choir members got stuck on a flight. Well, I'm actually, her flight got canceled on the way back from Texas um, at 12 o'clock today. She was supposed to come back and sing this song. We want to give a big shout out to Miss Summer Durant. And so what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going like, to fake like I'm singing this song. But we want y'all to join us. It just goes like this. Hello, God. Come on, wave your hand. Say, hello, God. Yeah. So glad to see you. Hello, God. Please stay. I almost forgot. Hello, God. Make yourself comfortable for your presence has made my day. Okay. Just made my day. Thank you so much. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> This goes like this, it just says, this is the hour, now is the time, I sense your glory, your presence now, we stand awaiting, anticipating for an outpour of your life-changing power, I see your hand, 
You've touched my heart, wrapped in your glory, never to part. Walk all around us, please take a seat at the throne of the Father as we bow at your feet. We bow at your feet. Hello, God. So glad to see you. Hello, God. Please stay. Hello, God. Make yourself comfortable for your presence just made my day. Is that all right? Y'all like that? Come on, choir, help me say, This is your dwelling place. I am your dwelling place. Forever, God, live forever, live in me. This is your dwelling place. I am your dwelling place. Forever, God. Lord, here I stand in all of you. Your awesome presence, your love so true. We give you worship. We give you praise as we sing hallelujah to the matchless name. Wave with me, say hello, God. Hello, God. Please stay. Oh, hello, God. Make yourself, make yourself comfortable for your presence. Oh, hello, God. Hello, God. So glad, so glad to see. Come on, have your hand with me, say hello. For your present, for your presence, just made my day. For your presence, just made my day. Just made my day. All right, come on, help us sing hello, God. Hello, God. So glad to see you. So glad to see you. Come on, hello, God. Hello, God. Say, please stay. Please stay. Hello, God. Hello, God. Make yourself comfortable. Make yourself comfortable. That's it. For your presence just made my day. Now, come on, give me a big wave. Hello, God. Hello, God. So glad. Hello, God. Please stay. Hello, God. Make yourself. Make yourself comfortable. For your presence. Presence, come on. For your presence, just made my day. For your presence, for your presence, just made my
everybody grateful? Give it up for Emanuela. She's a graduate student here at Georgetown. We thank you for your time with us. She has really blessed this university with her wonderful voice. I'm tempted to have you come do another encore, but we're
nobody else. I thank God for his goodness. How he's pulled me out of some tough situations. Some real tough situations. All right, we get ready for the last song. Some of y'all been sitting down the whole time. We're going to try to get you up on this one. Because you know what? Having church does not have to be one way or the other. But however, it, however you desire to be, it doesn't need to be boring. All right? Doesn't need to be born. Whatever you do, however you do it, do with all your might, all your energy. Doesn't need to be born. So when we say gospel, we can't help but to put all of it into it because we think about these words. For your goodness and your mercy toward us. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? All right. Next song says, I come that you might have life more abundantly. We're going to end on this. And some of y'all may, you know, you may not be used to clapping this fast, but <laughs> do the best you can. Okay? Look down your road and see if you can figure out who's, who's got all the rhythm. Look down your road and see if you can figure it out. Yeah. Why are you looking at somebody else? They're looking at you. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. Woo! Come on.
he makes the most energetic song where I, I can't breathe, the one where I have to speak afterwards. So give me a second. for coming out. We have loved fellowshipping with y'all and praising God with all of you here. Um, I have a few thanks to give on um, many, many people. If I forget your name, please charge it to my head and not my heart. Um, first and foremost, thank you, President DeJoy, for always supporting us and everything that we're doing and making so many things possible for our choir. We thank you so much. And next would be Rev O, our number one supporter. We couldn't do this without you. We really couldn't. And we thank you so, so much. We want to thank Rev. Christy and also Rev. Wendy for always being there for us. We love, we have a really special place for Rev. Wendy in our heart. And we are so glad that we've gotten to commune with you and reflect and fellowship with you for the past four years. So thank you so much for being with us. Um, we want to thank everybody in Protestant ministry. Jordan Blackwell is an amazing ecumenical coordinator. He makes so many things happen for us, including food. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, we want to thank, I don't see, no, Ian is our number one liaison. He makes so many logistical things happen that you wouldn't believe. So we thank you so much, Ian. Thank you, Ende, for taking all of our pictures and doing our media. You're amazing, and we love you. Thank you, of course, to Phil. He whips us into shape, and he does it with a smile on his face. And we love you, and we thank you for that. I don't, I want to thank the choir for dealing with me. And I know, <laughs> I love all of you, I really do. And I hope that everything that we've done this semester has been worth it for this moment. I hope it was all worth it. I think that's it. We have a beautiful reception, one floor down, right after the service, okay? So please don't miss it. There's lots of food and there's takeout containers. So college students, that's for you. That's for you. We got you. We the plug. We the plug in these streets. Yes. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you. You might just say joy again out there. Joy! Woo! Okay. Before we go, um, since this will be pretty much, we're going to retire this, this version of this song this year since Emmanuel is gone. I don't want, I don't want anybody, I don't want to hear anybody else singing after she's gone. We want to dedicate something to Dr. Wickman, who is my partner in ministry here at Georgetown, and Dr. Jack DeJoy, and Reverend Ostrick, Reverend Adams, everybody who serves. First time I got here four years ago, attended my first Catholic mass, Dr. Wickman and the choir did a song that just stuck with me the whole time. It just basically said, these alone are enough for me. And before Emanuela graduates with her graduate degree, yes, yes, we're going to end this program with her singing the song. And in fact, uh, we want to do five hundred marks of benediction, and then we'll end with this song. I'm glad that I'm, I'm not having to offer a benediction because this song is hauntingly beautiful. So um, I hope that it speaks to your heart the way it speaks to mine. Uh, as a closing benediction, one of the things, we have an amazing group of staff people. We have an amazing group of students who work with us in campus ministry. We embrace and talk a lot about all of the things going on in our world. You'll find that uh, a Protestant ministry uh, is partnering um, for a production of uh, God and Country, which, yeah, I recommend if you haven't got tickets for this, uh, directed and written by Reverend Christy Adams. Um, the more that I... That so many students have committed so much of their time to make this an amazing production. Um, I see them in the chapel, like rehearsing over and over again, going out and flyering. Um, it's going to be a tremendous thing. If you haven't got your tickets, they're going fast. You might want to get them uh, as quick as you can. But it's just tremendous, and it's another statement of um, our students and what they can do and what this ministry is about and the way it speaks a word of hope to our world um, in the midst of all of that we're seeing around us. So receive this benediction. Um, knowing that there'll be another one that follows. So go forth in peace, knowing we love God. Yay! See, he's up here. I see him.
By the way, uh, Reverend Adams is happy that I'm up here offering this benediction because uh, my wife is expecting any day now, and every time I look at the phone, she's convinced I'm going to run out the door. So, uh, so I made it, right? <laughs> she was really worried that it was going to happen before the sermon. So receive this benediction. Go forth in peace, knowing the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, but most especially the fellowship of one another now and forever. Take my